This is the easiest way to get open source large language models running on your local computer. It doesn't matter if you've never experimented with AI before, you can get this working. The software is called LM Studio, something that I've used in previous videos. And today I'm gonna show you how to use it. Let's go. This is the LM Studio website. The LM Studio software is available on all platforms, Apple, Windows, and Linux. Now today I'm gonna to show you how to get it running on a Mac, but I've gotten this working on Windows as well, and it is dead simple. So really you just download the software and install it. There's nothing to it. And once you do that, this is the actual LM Studio. So first let's explore the homepage. Here you're gonna get a nice little search box where you can search for different models that you wanna try out. Basically anything available on Hugging Face is gonna be available in LM Studio. If you scroll down a little bit, you get the new and noteworthy model. So Obviously, here's Zephyr 7B Beta. Here's Mistral 7B Instruct, Code Llama, Open Orca. These are the top models for various reasons. And not only that, it tells you a bunch about every single model. It pulls in all the information from the model card so it's easily readable from here. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, UPDF. UPDF is an awesome free alternative to Adobe Acrobat, but let me just show it to you. So after a few clicks, I got it downloaded and installed. I loaded up an important PDF and you can do a lot of awesome things with it. So let's start with OCR. So I click this little button in the top right. I select searchable PDF and then perform OCR. So that allowed me to search through it and do other things with it now that it's a text document. Very easy. And there we go. After a few seconds, I have the OCR version right here. Now I can highlight all the text easily. Switching back to the PDF, we can do a bunch of cool stuff. So we can easily highlight, we can add notes. I can easily protect it using a password by clicking this button right here. I can easily add stamps, so I could say confidential right there. And you can easily edit PDFs, check this out. And best of all, it has a really cool AI feature where you can actually ask questions to this document. So it's basically chat with your docs. All you have to do is click this little UPDF AI in the bottom right. It loads up the document, I click get started and it's gonna give me a summary first and then I can ask it any question I want. All right, so let's ask it something. Who are the authors of this paper? So be sure to check out UPDF and they're giving a special offer to my viewers, 61% off their premium version, which gives you a lot of other features. Link and code will be down in the description below. Thank you to UPDF. So let's try it out. If I just search for Mistral, and hit enter. I go to the search page and we have every model that has Mistral in the keywords. And just like Hugging Face, you get the author and then you get the model card information and you get everything else involved too. So you can really think of this as a beautiful interface on top of Hugging Face. So here's the blokes version from four days ago. Let's take a look at that. So if I click on it here, I can see the date that it was uploaded again, four days ago. I can see it was authored by the bloke and then I have the model name, Dolphin 2.2. 2.1 Ash Lima RP Mistral 7B GGUF. A lot of information in that title. On the right side, we can see all the different quantized versions of the model. So everything from the smallest Q2 version all the way up to the Q8 version, which is the largest. Now, if you're thinking about which model to choose and even within a model, which quantized version to use, you wanna fit the biggest version that can actually work on your machine. And it's usually a function of RAM or video RAM. So if you're on a Mac, it's usually just RAM, but if you have a video card on a PC, you're gonna look at your video RAM from your video card. So I'm on a Mac today, so let's take a look. And one incredible thing that LM Studio does for you out of the box is that it actually looks at your specs of your computer and right here, it has this green check and should work, which means the model that I have selected right now should work on my computer given my specs. So you no longer have to think about, well, how much RAM do I have? How much video RAM do I have? What's the model size? Which quantization method should I use? It'll just tell you it should work. Now here's another example. I just searched for Llama. This is the Samantha 1.1 version of Llama and it is a 33 billion parameter version. And right here it says requires 30 plus gigabytes of RAM. Now my machine has 32 gigabytes, so it should be enough and it's not saying it won't work but it's giving me a little warning that says, hey, it might not work. And back to the search page for Mistral, let's look at a few other things that we're gonna find in here. So it tells us the number of results. It tells us it's from Hugging Face Hub. We can sort by the most recent. We can sort by the most likes. 
we can sort by the most downloads. Usually likes and downloads are pretty in line with each other. I usually like to sort by most recent because I like to play around with whatever the most recent models are. And you can also switch this to least. So you click on that and you can find least recent, but I don't know why you would want to do that. Then we also filter by a compatibility guess. So it won't even show me models that it doesn't think I can run. And if I click that again, now it's showing all models. So I like to leave that on filtered by compatibility best guess. Now again, within the list of quantized versions of a specific model, we can actually see the specific quant levels here. So this is Q2K, Q2KS, and so on, all the way up to Q8. And the largest one down here is gonna be also the largest file size. If we hover over this little information icon right here, we get a little description of what each of the quantization methods give us. So here, Q2, lowest fidelity, extreme loss of quality, use is not recommended. And up here, we can see what the recommended version is, which is the Q5KM or KS. And it says recommended right there. So these are just a little bit of a loss of quality. Q5 is usually what I go with. Here it gives us some tags about the base model, the parameter size, and the format of the model. We can click here to go to the model card if we want, but then we just download. So we download it right here. So I'm gonna download one of the smaller ones. Let's give it a try. We just click, and then you can see on the bottom, this blue stripe lit up, and if we click it, we can actually see the download progress. And it really is that easy. And you can see right here, I've already downloaded the Find Code Llama 34B model. And I'm actually gonna be doing a video about that and also another coding model called DeepSeek Coder. And what makes LM Studio so awesome is that it is just so easy to use and the interface is gorgeous. It's just super clear how to use this for anybody. And it makes it really easy to manage the models, manage the different flavors of the models. It's a really nice platform to use. All right, while that's downloading, I'm going to load up another model and show it to you. So in this tab right here, this little chat bubble tab, this is essentially a full interface for chatting with a model. So up at the top here, if we click it, you find all the models that you've downloaded. And I've gone ahead and selected this Mistral model, which is relatively small, 3.82 gigabytes. So I select that and it loads it up. And then I'm really done. It's ready to go. I'm going to talk about all the settings on the right side though. And over here on the right side, the first thing we're going to see is the pre Preset, which basically sets up all the different parameters pre-done for whatever model you're selecting. So for us, for this Mistral model, of course, I'm going to select the Mistral Instruct preset, and that's going to set everything. Here's the model configuration, and you can save a preset, and you can also export it. And then right here, we have a bunch of different model parameters. So we have the output randomness. And again, what I really like about LM Studio is that it can be used even if you're not familiar with all of this terminology. So typically you see temp and end predict and repeat penalty, but a lot of people don't know what that stuff actually means. So it just tells you output randomness, words to generate, repeat penalty. And if you hover over it, it gives you even more information about it. So here, output randomness, also known as temp, and it says, provides a balance between randomness and determinism. At the extreme, a temperature of zero will always pick the most likely next token, leading to identical outputs each run. But again, as soon as you select the preset, it'll set all of these values for you so you can play around with it as you want. Here's the actual prompt format. So we have the system message, user message, and the assistant message. And you can edit all of that right here. Here you can customize your system prompt or a pre-prompt. So if you want to do role playing, this would be a great place to do it. So you could say, you are Mario from Super Mario Brothers, respond as Mario. And then here we have model initialization. And this gets into more complex settings. Some things are keep the entire model in and RAM. And a lot of these settings you'll probably never have to touch. And here we go. We have hardware settings too. So I actually do have Apple Metal. I'm going to turn that on and I'll click reload and apply. And there we go. Next, we have the context overflow policy. And that means when the response is going to be too long for the context window, what does it do? So the first option is just stop. The second option is keep the system prompt and the first user message, truncate the middle. And then we also have maintain a rolling window and truncate past messages. So, so I'll just keep it as stop at limit for now. And then we have the chat appearance. Do we want plain text or markdown? I do want markdown. And then at the bottom, we have notes. And now that we got all those settings ironed out, let's give it a try. All right, and I said, tell me a joke. Mario, knock, knock, who's there? Jokes, jokes who? Just kidding, I'm not really good at jokes, but here's one for you. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. And so you can export it as a screenshot, you can regenerate it, or you can just continue. And continue is good if you're getting a long response and it gets cut off. Over on the left side, we have all of our chat 
history. So if you've used ChatGPT at all, this should feel very familiar. If you wanna do a new chat, you just click right here. If you wanna continue on the existing chat, you just keep typing. So for example, I can just say, tell me another one. And it should know that I'm talking about a joke because it's continuing from the history that I previously had in here. So why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Great. Now, if I wanted to say new chat and I said, tell me another one, it wouldn't know what I'm talking about. There we go. And it's just typing out random stuff now. So I'm going to click stop generating. And then if we look at the bottom, we have all the information about the previous inference that just ran. So time to first token, generation time, tokens per second, the reason stopped, GPU layers, et cetera, et cetera. So it really gives you everything, but it keeps it super simple. The next thing I wanna show you is for developers. So if you wanna build an AI application using LM Studio to power the large language model, you click this little double arrow icon right here, which is local server. So I click that and all you have to do is click start Start server. You set the port that you want. You can set whether you want cores on and you have a bunch of other settings that you can play with. So once I click start server, now I can actually hit the server just like I would open AI. And this is a drop in replacement for open AI. So it says right here, start a local HTTP server that behaves like open AI's API. So this is such an easy, easy way to use large language models in your application that you're building. And it also gives you an example client request right here. And so this is curl. So we curl to the local host endpoint chat completions and we provide everything we need, the messages, the temperature, the max tokens, stream. And then it also gives us a Python example right here. So if we wanted to use this Python example, we could do that. And what's awesome is you can just import the OpenAI Python library and use that but instead replace the base with your local host and it'll operate just the same. So you get all the benefits of using the OpenAI library, but you can use an open source model. And of course, on the right side, you get all the same settings as before. So you can adjust all the different settings for the model. And then the last tab over here looks like a little folder. So we click it, it's the My Models tab, which allows you to manage all the different models that you have on your computer. So right now it says I have two models taking up 27 gigabytes of space. I don't want this fine model anymore. It's taking up too much space. So let's go ahead and delete it. So I just click delete and it's gone just like that. It is so easy to manage all of this. And I think I covered everything for LM Studio. If you want to see me cover any other topic related to LM Studio, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.